What applications do you mean when you say crypto is Web 3.0? Very good question. So let me kind of take a back step. Web 1 was the first version of the internet. I think 1990s dial-up modems uh, to Yahoo uh, to even Google and Amazon and eBay, all that. Web 2.0 was essentially social media. So think YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, connecting people. Web 3.0 is building trustless applications, applications that are not controlled by any central authority. These are the centralized applications. So let me pull up this picture here I found, right? Which does a good job of explaining this concept of Web3. So Web2.0, we have the browser, right? Now we have web, web browsers that run Web3 apps, like Brave, uh, for example. Uh, then you have storage. You have Dropbox and Google Drive, Web2. You have, you have Filecoin. You have storage, IPFS. Uh, for social, you have Steam for Web3. So basically, all these different products will be shifted to a point where they can run peer-to-peer -peer and not have any central person controlling them. Not, not a government, not a bank. And that is huge. So what are some sample applications? Uh, DeFi. DeFi because if we go to the DeFi stack, let me look this up here. Um, DeFi composability. This is uh, a good example. This is why the image is very low quality. Let me find a better version of this. Well, let's say if I composability stack. Okay. Even this is very low in quality. Okay. this is better right so this is a stack we basically have blockchains at the bottom in this case we have ethereum you can also consider cosmos broken out bitcoin but most of DeFi is running on ethereum then you have other infrastructure protocols that run on top of that blockchain so in this case we have oracles we have chain link Band protocol, uh, Teller. Then we have privacy. There's Enigma, which is now shifting to secret net network. Tornado Cash, which is a mixer. But now we have the other kind of the core DeFi stack. We have derivatives, synthetics, uh, UMA. Then you have uh, DEXs. You have stable coins. You have lending, Compound Maker, Ave. You have DEXs and aggregators, one inch exchange, zero X protocol. You have insurance with Nexus Mutual, open, which is for options. So all of these are applications actually running on the blockchain. In this case, the Ethereum blockchain. So this is the new internet. If we go to this stack, imagine all the big internet applications shifting to become trustless where you don't have to rely on Facebook, on Google, on Amazon. That is powerful. So for example, what happened recently when the, when basically all social media sites banned Trump in a decentralized internet, you can't really do that. It does have both good and bads to it. That's something uh, we'll figure out <laughs> once that happens, uh, but being able to create applications, for example, where a government with a dictator cannot suppress the people, right? That's powerful. That's freedom. That's liberating. So this is happening, right? 
all this Web3, all these applications, they're in a way kind of uncoupling. Let me see if I can if I can find the DeFi bank stack. DeFi bank. Okay, this is pretty much the same thing, but you guys kind of get the idea, right? This is why I think Ethereum is literally the next internet, right? So when I say I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of an ETH maximalist, because all of this is happen on Ethereum, it could, ha could possibly happen on Bitcoin. But in this in this example, Bitcoin into wrap Bitcoin. Ethereum is eating Bitcoin. Now the the other competing blockchains are, are Polka and Cosmos and some others. But right now, Ethereum is in the lead. This is the new internet, and it's happening on Ethereum. That's why uh, ETH is going to the moon and beyond. Uh, Bill, any comments? You know, one day, people are going to laugh at the idea that things like social media were controlled by some centralized entity. Matter of fact, centralized entities in general may be laughable five years from now. So when money decentralizes, then identity will decentralize, right? You won't have to show a piece of paper. Uh, it'll be something kept on a blockchain. Uh, I think when you talk Web3, you're talking like Wall Street. You're talking about your identity. And then I think you're eventually going to talk about how we use blockchains to connect with each other as human beings without some entity saying, you can say this, but not that. I had a history professor who said, you know, if you're going to stick up for free speech, you're going to have to defend people that you vehemently disagree with. I'm a big fan of free speech and I think blockchain and possibly crypto is going to be a way for people to pay each other, trade with each other, and eventually relate to each other without some third party getting involved. I mean, my telegram has blown up from, you know, people leaving other social media platforms to whatever they knew on Telegram. And, you know, that's from every race, creed, color that there is. So Web3 is about people voting with their feet to form different kinds of monies and different kinds of electronic ways to connect with each other. All right, well said, Bill, well said. So to our audience, what do you think about Web3? Let us know down below. Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com.